Welcome back to KTN's Morning Express. If you're just joining us, you're just in time to find out what's happening in the film industry and why possibly you're not seeing more Kenyan films on your TV screens. And in studio with me, Jenny Mwigai and Barbara Caruana. We're meant to have Sarah Hassan this morning, uh, but she was unable to make it. But it's good to have you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. They Thank are the you. winners of something called the 48-hour film project. So why don't you explain to me, Barbara, what this is? The 48-hour film project is a filmmaking competition that happens globally. Uh, it's basically an opportunity for filmmakers to make a movie in literally 48 hours. So from Friday at 7 p.m., you receive information about a film that you're required to make, and you need to write it, shoot it, edit it, score music for it, possibly grade it uh, if you want to, and deliver it all in 48 hours. Okay, I'm being told that I have to remove my iPad so that we can see your lovely, lovely awards. And so you embarked on this very ambitious journey to create this film in 48 hours, and you succeeded, yes. and then you won. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what does that mean for you guys? Also, are you a film organization? Are you in, a, in an agency, or how does this work? Uh, no, actually... Barbara is the one who reached out to most of us yeah. Yeah, to join the team. Um, it's, just, it's just a coming together of various people in the industry and you know, the former team, and then off we go. And when you form this team and you create this film, is it um, something that you pick? You decide, okay, I want to talk about poverty, or I want to talk about death and disaster, or any of those things. Or is it a set thing that you need to discuss in the film? Actually, what happens, uh, which is why the competition is so unique and so interesting, is that uh, on the day, on the Friday at 7 p.m., you find out three things. You find out a line of dialogue that has to be in your film. You find out a prop that has to be in your film, say, for example, a glass of milk or a watch. Or this year, our prop was a, a torch, flashlight. a flashlight. Um, and then you find out what genre of film you are going to be making. So, for example, we made a film, we made something called a film de femme, which is, translates loosely from French into a film, a film of woman or whatever. Yeah. But basically, it's a film that has a strong female character as its lead. Um, and that was really challenging, we realized, <laughs> uh, because it's very difficult to write a story about a woman that doesn't portray her as a victim because that's how we are trained to think that okay. women women are the sidekick women are always you know the afterthought but yeah. to have the opportunity or to be put in a situation where you have to write a film about a strong woman it was extremely challenging and it was the best part yeah. so congratulations one more once more because I know there were 19 entries and you guys came out um, as a best film and also you got best editor if I'm not wrong and best actress right yes, yes. Um, okay but how do you think your work compares globally for other winners of the 48 Film Festival, say, in Russia or <laughs> in South Africa, how yeah. does your work compare? Um, I, think, I think for everyone who comes into this experience, it's always, a, it's a test. It's a test of your skill. It's a test of your talent, if at all you have any. Um, <laughs> so it's the, the, the pressure going in is extremely overwhelming. I remember, um, this was my first time taking part in this in this competition, so you're faced with you know the dilemma of am I am I gonna write am I, am I gonna write a good uh, a good story am I gonna direct a good story am I am I going to provide the best sound that I can so it's it's very it's very challenging it 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 it, it needs you to overcome a lot of your own personal shortcomings. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but to answer your question, um, how we compare, uh, well, to be frank, <laughs> I think that having only done this in our second year, we have a really long way to go. Mm. Before we, we wrote and shot the film, we had been watching a lot of other entries for, um, of 448, because this year, the competition happened in 130 cities, Nairobi included. And when you watch some of the stuff that people are doing, say, especially in Paris, where they've had huge teams, almost 200 people on a team. Mm -hmm. You can see, we can see, honestly, that we have a long way to go before we can get to the level of these people who've been doing this competition for almost 10 years. All right, um, and so let me get a bit more technical in terms of policy, because the government has been very clear that it wants to support the film industry, yeah. um, getting rid of taxes when it comes to film equipment. Is that helping? Are we seeing more people getting into the industry, churning out more quality work, Jenny? Um, well, the, 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 the two things can be mutually exclusive. Government support and the churning out of quality can be mutually exclusive. However, it does help if there's government backing. Like, for example, in, in Canada, if I'm not wrong, there's a, a policy in place where there's 
almost I think 75% subsidization on um, on on equipment on fees for shooting. So it, it really does help because the biggest the biggest issue for us aside from getting equi equipment is the price of the the cost of shooting. The cost of shooting a film in Kenya is extremely hefty. When you say the cost of shooting, what does that mean? There are people who have no idea what you're talking about. Well, costs like crew salaries, yeah. costs like location fees, mm -hmm. um, feeding people on set because you have to feed your crew. <laughs> if you don't feed your crew, you're not going to shoot anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, basically crew welfare comes really high in the list of priorities in production. And sometimes all the things that you need, all the elements that you need, the resources that you require to make your story come to life can also be very expensive. That's something that you can control based on what you're writing. Mm -hmm. But there are things that you cannot, you cannot, um, you cannot compromise on. So example, for example, the quality of, you know, services that you're giving to your crew. I mean, the quality of care you're giving to your crew. And uh, how the government can really contribute in making life easier for filmmakers is giving us locations for free. All right. Is it unfair to say that Kenya, compared to the region, is still lagging behind when it comes to the film industry? Barbara? I don't oh, think... I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think it's fair to say that. Um, I think that, to be honest, in, in East Africa, we are quite ahead. Yeah. Yeah, because we have a lot of production houses that are churning out really good quality stuff and they're doing it consistently. And I'll, I'll quote Spielworks as an example because I think that they're really just like going at it and making films, and making things, making content, content that people would like to watch because okay. it's good. So there's obviously a supply, but yes. is there demand? Are you getting people saying to you, okay, could you please make a film about this, this and this? Are you getting commissions coming to you and saying, could you do one, two, three things for us? I personally, as a, as, a, as a freelance filmmaker, um, <laughs> those are few and far between. Yeah, um, uh, and I don't know how I, I don't know how it is on the, on the flip side to be in a production in a production company. However, I, I'm I'm of the opinion that to some extent, mm -hmm. demand has to be synthesized. To some extent, we have to create the demand to fit our supply. We have to keep churning out quantity and like lots of quantity so that the masses can have it shoved down their throat so that then they can ask for it. Have it shoved down their throat. You mean like have these movies constantly play in the yes. cinemas? Yeah. Okay, so you think the, the government ideal of having 60% of the content that we're seeing be localized is, is, in, good, is in good faith? It's, it's, it's a step in the right direction? Yes. I think it's a step in the right direction, but it should be exercised with caution because a lot of the, the reasons why people don't watch local TV is that because it's just not very good, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So if you have six out of ten of the films in your local, oh, in your local <laughs> cinema, being Kenyan, and you're saying that they're not good, does this then put people off? Of course of it does. Stuff. Because if I go to the cinema and I want to watch good film and then I, I'm being forced to watch stuff that I don't like, I'm not going to go back. So the thing is, if you're going to make it be 60%, it has to be a really good 60%. Or it would even rather just be 30%, but be a really good 30%. 30%. Because then people crave it. For example, Nairobi Half-Life. Mm -hmm. Everybody I know watched Nairobi Half-Life and they really, really loved it. Why? Because it was a fantastic film. It was well made and people received it well because it was a good story. Okay. But you can't expect people to watch stuff that has been pieced together in a couple of weeks without really much okay. care okay. and expect them to love it and think that the Kenyan industry is great. That's not how it's going to work. But there's, okay. Go sorry, but there's also the flip side where we have extreme amounts of, like we have a lot of content on, on television that is not necessarily the best quality, but the masses are taking it in because it is available to them. So I feel, I feel like the balance, that balance should be, should be achieved where we have great content, but we also have a good amount of content to put out. Um, and how do we not risk going the West African way, where we have a booming film industry that is filled and saturated with terrible films? Well, let's not say they're terrible because they serve a particular <laughs> purpose. That they they entertain people. Yeah. And that's the thing. We cannot is that a compromise worth making as a filmmaker yourself to say, okay, my work is entertaining people. It might not necessarily be the best, but I'm going to produce at least 20 of these every year because it's entertainment. Let me tell you why that still has some sort of advantage. Because you gain experience. You can do 20 bad films, but I promise you that from those 20 films, you will pick up one useful tip. Yeah. So you have 20 tips that you would never have had if you had just done one film and said, I'm going to be fantastic at this one film. I appreciate what they're doing. They are 
they're playing the game of life. They're actually doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy for us to sit here in Kenya and judge them and say, oh my God, Nigerian films are so bad. But then they're actually doing it. And that really counts for something. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of tips and experiences, do we have any institutions in Kenya that are dedicated to improving the skills and the quality of the work that comes out from filmmakers? So are we seeing academies coming up? Are we seeing people yeah. uh, become mentors to other people who want to get into the industry? Well, yes. Um, there's, a, there's a school that was recently started called the Jamhuri Film and Television Institution or Academy. Academy. Yeah. yeah. There, there are very many schools, there are very many universities that are also coming up with, with tailor-made um, courses that, that fit the filmmaker because majority of us probably studied journalism and then went into film as, as... I did that. Yeah, so did I. I, I studied journalism at USIU, mm -hmm. and just as I was about to leave, which was very frustrating for me, just as I was about to leave, there were plans to start a, a film school, okay. about a, you know, like a film faculty, and that was really exciting for me, because I realized that this generation is full of visual storytellers. That's how we communicate. And so it's so important to have a pool of people that actually have skill, real skill, not mm -hmm. just stuff that they've picked up off the street, yeah? And that's so encouraging, and I'm glad you asked about um, people that are trying to make filmmakers better because I don't know if you know about the One Fine Day Film Project. Yes. Yes. The One Fine Day Film Project is something that has been going on for about, I think, six years, if I'm not wrong. And it's completely dedicated to making filmmakers much better. And that's how Nairobi Half-Life was born. And there are people who are so dedicated to making sure that filmmakers in this country and around Africa are getting better. Okay. Why is it so important um, to solidify that? Why is it so important that the visual narratives that we have are told by Kenyan filmmakers? Because there's someone who might be watching this interview and thinking, well, I don't really care about films or movie making. Well, you may not care about the process, but the story will forever be what ties us to that. As a Kenyan, you can't, you can't have anyone else tell your story because it's not their story. They can't tell your story. There have been very many complaints, at least I've, I've heard very many complaints about certain movies that were made by production companies or by people that are not Kenyan, and it's a um, and it's an it's a it's an, a purely authentic Kenyan story, and that story suffers because it's not told from an authentic point of view. Yeah. So the reason we need this is so that we can tell our stories. We need to tell we need to tell the African story. We need to tell the Kenyan story because if we're not telling it, who's telling it? And what gives that person the right? And you know, but if, if it's if it's it's if it's a free for all, if there's no one if there's no Kenyan telling that story, then who's gonna tell that story? Okay. So the curious person who thinks, All right, I'm very keen to see what they came up with after forty eight hours and I know your film is being shown today at Prestige Plaza, I believe. Yes, yes there's uh, there were before. actually two screenings last week, uh, which were planned screenings because they were an opportunity for us to see our own films and also to vote and give um, one of the films the audience award. And then we had the presentation of the prizes on Friday. But there's another screening today at Prestige at 7 p.m. So everybody who went last week, uh, last minute as we all do because we are Kenyans <laughs> and didn't find tickets, now is your now chance. Is, yeah. Now is your Why chance. Why should they come and watch this film? There's a bunch of things to do on a Thursday when a holiday is about to check in. Yeah. Why would I want to spend my money and my time watching a film that was made in 48 hours because it's different because it's not something that you've done before because you actually might learn something you might see something there that changes how you view the film industry because you're curious there's a very specific kind of person who appreciates film let me be honest yeah. we don't all like sport i cannot stand football but there are people whose lives revolve around it it's the same way that my life revolves around film so maybe there might be people who are watching this and thinking i would never do that i would never go and watch those films but there's someone who's sitting there watching this interview thinking yeah, maybe. To you, which camera should I look into? To you, <laughs> you should go, 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 go and watch the films tonight. It's going to be so great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she, Barbara has said something important about you know telling a story and doing it differently, um, and doing things differently. Are we seeing that coming out of the continent, or are we simply just cutting and pasting what we're seeing in Hollywood? Well, influences will definitely be there. Yeah. It's, it's 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 very unfair to assume that the African story is you know, one-dimensional. But um, 
I think the, let's not take away from the fact that Hollywood is working. Yeah. You know, there's a reason why it works. Maybe okay, maybe it's a cultural thing. Maybe their minds are set to be that way. But there are a lot of things that we can pick up from that, and that can still work here. Mm -hmm. Which is why we all like that entertainment. So there's nothing wrong with us taking it and applying it here. Yeah. Copy pasting it completely, of course, is wrong. But if we can take some of that model and tweak it for ourselves, it will work fantastically. And how long do you think it will be before Kenya or even Africa can say, oh, look at our um, Hollywood, look at our whatever money minting machine that is being created out of film. How long until we can say that? I think we're in it already. Really? I, have, I, have. I, think, I think we're definitely in it already. We have, we have a thriving television and film industry in, in South Africa. Here in Kenya, in, in, in Ghana, in, in, Nigeria. in Nigeria, we cannot overlook Let's not forget Ghana, or did you already yeah, say yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> we can't overlook the fact that there are models that are working. We may be slow to, you know, to the, to the, to the, to the curve, but, you know, like, we're getting there. We have, we have people that, we have filmmakers, we have actors that we can name that are not Kenyan. Okay, no. but why do you think it has taken the continent so long to get to that point? Because Africans are traditionally known to be storytellers. So you would imagine that we'll be so quick to visually represent these stories. Why has it taken us so long, Jenny? I think, I think the, the simple fact that we tell our stories very traditionally. It's, 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 the visual story hasn't, has, has not been very welcoming to this new medium. You know, so it's just it's just the simple fact that we we're still very traditional and we we st we push away modernity to some extent. So, so you think we would much rather be sitting around three stones, a cooking pot, and telling the stories there in 2014? No, but that's 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 exactly how we tell our stories. When's the la when is the last time you someone someone brought you a video, yeah, of of a story that they were telling? I do, I do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like. We, we tell our stories verbally, and that's the extent of how we tell our stories. We've never been, I don't think we've, we've been very quick to accept the fact that we can put it on screen Okay. As, as, as a um, valid way Barbara, of telling I don't know if story. you agree with this. I'm seeing you shaking your head. I, I don't know if it's in agreement. I completely or... disagree. Yeah. I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> I, I just think we've been dealing with different issues for the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. here, Kenyans. I think we're just focused on trying to feed people. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe our priorities have not yet reached there. Because entertainment, honestly, is, is not really like at the top of the list. You know, and maybe... If, Kenyans find entertainment in different things like alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we're not really investing money <laughs> so much yeah. in that, which is fine. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I think maybe our priorities have been separate for a long time, mm. but you can shift the focus. That could happen. Okay. It is happening. I'm seeing on the preview that we actually have um, some bits of what you did. Uh, Joseph, the director, if you can confirm that for me, then we can play a little bit just so that people have a clear idea of what you were working on. Yeah, that's, that's after you. One of the films that was in... Um, so, okay, as we wait to see that, so that's after you, that's one of the films that was in. I'm seeing that it's actually on YouTube right now. Yeah. Which brings me to my next question. This space that is opening, this free space that has completely opened up the world, which is the internet. Are we using it? Are we maximizing the potential that it has for us? We're definitely not. As Kenyans, we really aren't. We are not putting up enough content. Um, because honestly, if you look at the videos that people do, say, in the States, it is amazing the kind of things that people come up with. You know, they're sitting in their house. It's literally them and a camera. And they have an entire web show. And they run it consistently. And I really admire that. Because maybe if we were doing that, our content would be pushed much further ahead. Do you think this has something to do with the fact that we don't teach arts in school? Yes, 100% yes. Uh, I, think, I think that, we're, I'm sorry Jenny to interrupt you, but I think that we're so focused on teaching people chemistry and biology, which is great because yeah. chemistry and biology is, is essential in any society. <laughs> but nobody ever says, wow, you would make such a great filmmaker to a child in class three. Nobody ever does that. Um, Jenny, you were going to say something. Yes, uh, the, I do agree with you on that. You know. But I also, I also we, we, don't, we don't teach ingenuity. We, we, we teach a particular structure. So you go to school. Can you teach ingenuity though? Can you teach well, you can, you you can, can you give can, it a you space to harness. exist. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So if, if, for example, and we've had this conversation with my family a lot of time, a, a lot, a, you know, a lot, where you have a child who is like, Ma, I want to take guitar lessons or I want to take 
soccer classes and you're like no you're going to become a doctor so the, the, we teach people we give people a particular structure and we throw them into that structure and there's no way out of that structure but like in the in, in the states in 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 in, in europe if, if you're doing it and it's not bothering your, your parents and if, you know if you if you're staying out of trouble then great you know do that and i think that's the reason why a lot of people will turn to the internet especially in the west because it's it's readily available it's free and it has the ability to reach 20 40 50 billion million people okay um so i'm being told that we only have five minutes left so i'm going to give you an opportunity to g g give a free ad here tell me about um the film that you made what was it about and what inspired it Oh wow! Uh, so the film that we made was about two women. Who what was it called? Oh, it's called Now, now that, that You're Here. Here. Now that you're here. Yes, yeah. and it's about two women that live in a house, and an intruder comes in. And uh, the film was inspired in a moment of extreme fatigue. Yes. When we had struggled, and so, like I mentioned earlier, we had really thought, like, what kind of story really represents a woman without it having to have her, say, for example, be tied to a man, or have her as a sidekick, or have her as a second thought, you know? And I don't want to give the story away, but. Uh, it was really just inspired by us trying desperately to make this woman as strong as possible. Okay, and yeah. you had to be the writer and come up with something in 48 hours. Actually, less, less than yeah. in, in, in five, five hours? Yeah, about five because hours. Because you see, the way you structure the weekend is that you have a very short amount of time for coming up with a story, mm -hmm. and then you have to write the story, and then you have to rehearse with the actors, and then shoot, and then, so you can't, you cannot pass that allocation of time. Yeah. And that's where the pressure really comes in. So I really respect Jenny because <laughs> she did not lose her mind, uh, uh, and she managed managed to come up with a decent story that we could shoot <laughs> and make it story. work yeah it was yeah. a decent like story we, like we said this 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 competition for anyone who's who's looking to get into it this is a test this is a test of self especially for the writer the director and the editor yeah. it is a it is a test of self because you have a very short amount of time i remember our our, our editor was <laughs> was editing in the car while we were driving to go to and have a, to go to our sound designer. Yeah. It's a very pressure intense. I was driving down yeah. Kiambu Road at yeah. a not very lawful speed. <laughs> and you know, her name is Halima. Hi, Halima. <laughs> and she was sitting in the back yeah. and I'm driving insane. I'm like, Halima, are you okay? She's like, yes, I'm fine. <laughs> and she's editing and she was such a sport and she managed to pull through for us. But just the adrenaline of being that moment and also delivering because I delivered 40 seconds to the deadline. 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. yeah. And last year it was two minutes, which means I'm getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> so last year was two minutes. This year was 40 seconds of deadline. It it really just tests your metal yeah, as a person. Does. Okay. Yeah. So what is the prize? I mean, you go through all this and then do you just get a plaque or what happens? Well, you get a plaque and you get some yeah. airtime and yeah. you get um, so we got a complimentary tickets. tickets and we got dinner at Art Cafe. Thank you, Art Cafe. Um, and also, um, as one of the best films, as the best film in Nairobi, we all have the best films from all, all the cities go to a festival called Film Apalooza, mm -hmm. which is happening in Hollywood next year, which is great. Yeah. Yay. And uh, the 12 best short films from Film Apalooza get to to Khan. Do you think you'll make the shortlist? We have. Honestly? Yes. Yes. Honestly? Yes. Uh, we are keeping. Uh, and we are not allowed to be self defeatist. I'm, 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 I'm not being. I'm not being. Yes. I'm not being self defeatist. I'm being extremely realistic. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, like we mentioned earlier, you know, the standard of films that are being shot right now are just are insane. Impeccable. Okay, yeah. but I mean, just even making it to Hollywood for you guys obviously means a lot. Are you going exactly. to enter this film into um, other festivals. other awards, or yeah. other festivals? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Other festivals. because what what you do with a short film is that you you have to enter it into various festivals, and then that way it gains some sort of identity some, yeah, and, some kind of and some traction and some validation. You know, and that's what establishes you as a filmmaker. People have to be able to recognize you. Oh, this is that person from that film of that year. You know, so. The fact that you've won one award counts for something. Okay, so yeah. validation. So it's in, in, it's imperative that people watch you and recognize that you've put work into it. Please this. do exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and and also and and also realize that you need to do that for every f every film, every show, anything that is that is created by you know us local filmmakers. There's a sense of validation that we crave. All we, artists. We were talking, yeah, we were talking about it. We were like, good. filmmakers I essentially are just big babies crying out for attention. That's exactly we what we just want you to like us. Like we just us, want please. you to like 
like what us. we create. Okay. So, yeah. um, so I'm making a request to my director to, if you can please get the now after you. Now that you're uh, here. Now that you're here. <laughs> oh gosh, now after you. Now that you're here. No problem. Yo, you know what? I wake up really early in the morning. <laughs> Do not judge me. Uh, but as he's fetching that, perhaps your ideal situation for the film industry in the next five years as we wrap up. Jenny? Wow. Five years feels like a really long time, but it's if you not. think about it, that's when you want to have policy changes. Yeah, definitely, you know, policy changes, definitely. And just a freer space, like, or rather a more open space for us to create. There's there are very, many, there are very many stereotypes that we've attached to what, you know, what filmmakers should create and what kind of, you know, what content people should be watching and how it should be made. I feel like even just as a society, we should be more welcoming, more open to the stories that could possibly come forth from filmmakers. Okay, yeah. Barbara, what's your ideal scenario for the film industry in the next five years? Uh, filmmakers being able to get locations for free? <laughs> <laughs> you laugh, but I am very serious. That would take us so much farther ahead. It would make our lives so much easier and it would really improve the quality of our stories. Because yeah. locations are everything, you know? Being able to shoot, I don't know, where was the wildest place I can think of right now? I, I was in a shoot the other day where we shot at the Globe Roundabout and that was really great. And yeah. I thought, wow, you know, we've been able to achieve this and, you know, the government supported us and that was really fantastic. So if we could just be able to walk into any government office and say, hey guys, we would like to shoot here. Are you on board with that? And they mm -hmm. say, yes, we would love to help. That would be really great. But also not even just the government because we don't want to be those guys who are constantly crying out for the government like yeah, it's number said said it no but also just like private investors as well the same way you would invest in a startup IT company is the same way that you should invest in a production house in 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 a filmmaker yeah. in even just a film yes. just putting in any any amount of even if it's just money even if it's location personal locations because yeah. The, the way we got through this film was by calling in favors, pretty much. Yeah. You know, so. Okay. And so, final question to you, Barbara, before we wrap up. Um, are we recycling our talent too much? Because is especially when it comes to actors and actresses. People yeah. say we're seeing the same people in movies, in TV shows, in ads. Is it that we don't have any new actors and actresses? And I'm so glad you've asked that question <laughs> because I've been ranting about this and I was especially ranting about it when I was looking for cast for this film. And I said one thing. First of all, to answer your question, the reason why you see the same people over and over is because these people take this as their primary occupation. Yes. This is their career. They take it seriously. They rehearse. They go to auditions. They do it over and over, over and, and over again. Mm -hmm. If you're the kind of person who wants to work nine to five and then act on the weekends, nobody's ever going to pick you. Mm -hmm. Also, another issue is that when I meet you as a director and I say, hi, Edith, I would really like to cast you. And you say, yes, I'm an actress. And I ask you, where's your work? You tell me, oh, you know, you can catch me on KBC <laughs> at seven. No, why don't you have a show? Why don't you have a list of compiled so works? So they also need to take their jobs they, Exactly. You need to have headshots. You, you need to have work. Seriously. We okay. take our work seriously. Why don't you as an actor? All right. Yeah. Why don't you as an actor take your job seriously is what the filmmakers are saying to you. And if I were you, I would listen. <laughs> they seem to know what they're saying. I mean, they have two awards on the table. Um, and they are, as we said, award-winning filmmakers. Their film is being shown <laughs> today at Prestige. Is that still new for you guys? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very, it's it's very, very award-winning. Well, they are award-winning filmmakers. <laughs> yeah. um, and that is where we wrap up this edition of KTN's Morning Express. I'm Edith Kimani. Thank you for your company. Guess what? Tomorrow is a holiday. So happy Jamboree Day to you. We'll see you on Monday. God willing. <laughs>